In this video, we will talk about RNS configurations and how to prevent possible discrepancies. So, so basically, I mean, just, just to kind of give you a quick refresher, um, when you are determining RNS configurations, if you count your orders of priority in a clockwise direction, and that's counting systematically from one to four, well, you're gonna end up with an R configuration. And if, if you count in a counterclockwise direction, you're going to end up with an S configuration. And, and remember, the, the larger the atomic mass, and I'm just gonna write AM for atomic mass, well, that's going to be the greater priority of, uh, in comparison to, to you know, a smaller atomic mass. So I'll just write low AM. And I'll just write, you know, greater priority as well. So, so now let's go into this and, uh, and try to determine our, our orders of priority. And, and by the way, we're using the, uh, the, the Khan Ingold pre-log convention system for, for counting. And that's just basically a, uh, a method to, uh, or a system by which atoms and groups are, are assigned priorities. And, and when we assign these priorities, what we are looking for are stereogenic centers or chiral carbons. And, and you can pretty much use those interchangeably as, as textbooks seem, seem to do so as well. But, but you know, this is going to be your, your chiral carbon or your stereogenic center. And, and so anyway, um, in order to, to have an RS configuration, we have to uh, be able to demonstrate that it's attached to four different substituents. So, so anyway, now let's go into um, our counting system and our, and our method for which we are able to determine RNS configurations. So oxygen, ethyl, methyl, and hydrogen. And, and keep in mind too, remember, we always want our lowest priority group to be pointing away from us. And, and when you look at these, these drawings in, in, in a three-dimensional perspective, or from a three-dimensional perspective, know that uh, your wedges, which are, which are these lines right here, um, these wedges actually indicate that that everything is coming toward you. So in other words, this methyl group is, is supposed to be pointing toward me, whereas if I look at this dashed line, this dashed line is indicating that this hydrogen is pointing away from me, and, and, it's, in, and it's in the back of the molecule. So, so anyway, um, we always want our lowest priority group to be pointing away from us, which is the case in, with, with this example. So, so now let's just do our counting. So we go one, and we end up with, with four on this side, but we count backwards and, and we end up with an S configuration or because we are uh, moving in a counterclockwise direction. And there's no need to invert because our hydrogen, which is our lowest priority group, well, well that's pointed away from us, so, so we're okay. So now let's move over to this molecule and we see that we have a one on the oxygen, two, three, and four once again. So we move in this direction. We have an S configuration, and we can see that we need to invert because our lowest priority group is pointing away from us as indicated by this wedge, and, and so as a result of that, we need to invert, and we end up with an R configuration. So, so I mean, I just kind of sped through that and, and you know, said, okay, if we, if we have our lowest priority group pointing away, then, then, you know, we just keep our configuration. And if we have our lowest priority group pointing toward us, well, we just simply invert and, and we call it whatever we, we get from that answer. Well, well, let me just demonstrate how, how a discrepancy can, can arise from that, from that method and, and why, why it occurs that way. So in this example, let me just change my colors, but, but basically in this example, there's, there's one thing to notice. And, and it's that basically our lowest priority group, it, it's not attached to a wedge or a dashed line. And, and in the previous examples, they were. And, and so what I, want, uh, what I want to demonstrate now is that the, the discrepancies arise from when we have our lowest priority group and it's not attached to a wedged or a dashed line. Instead, it's attached to one of these planar bonds. And I'm just going to call it a planar bond, um, indicating that, that, you know, it's not... It's not necessarily pointing toward us, and it's not necessarily pointing away. It's just it's just in the plane of the uh, of the molecule. So so anyway, let's go back and count our priorities. So one, two, and by the way, ET is just an abbreviation for ethyl. So uh, that's just kind of a lazy way of of drawing out the rest of the molecule. But but that's ethyl, and three, four. So we move in this direction. 
we end up with an S configuration. However, we may be inclined to invert because as I mentioned earlier, this is not necessarily pointing toward us or away. Um, so, so we may be inclined to invert and as a result of that, we end up with an R configuration. So let's just verify this information by demonstrating this, this same molecule on a Fisher projection. And by the way, Fisher projections are very reliable and in, in terms of uh, determining R and S configurations. So, so that's kind of one of the things that, that makes them very useful. Um, I'm going to, to show my, my wedges. Wedges are always going to be horizontal and then dashes are, are always going to be vertical. So if I'm staring at this molecule and let's see here, I suppose I can just kind of draw a little eyeball here, but, but basically if I have a, uh, a viewpoint, say from this angle, well if I look to the right, I can see that I have a methyl group. If I look to the left, I have an ethyl. If I look up, I have bromine. And if I look below, I have hydrogen. And by the way, this, this actually is, a, is another method for determining R and S configurations as well. So, I mean, if you ever have a small molecule where you just have one chiral center or stereogenic center, well, well, you can also just convert it over into a Fisher projection and solve from there, and you know that you know you, you know that you're working with a reliable method uh, in terms of determining R and S configurations from that point. But but anyway, uh, aside from that, I just wanted to want to make that point clear as I'm as I'm kind of flowing through this. But but let's just now assign our priorities. So bromine will be one, ethyl two, three for methyl, and four for hydrogen and we move in this direction. We have an S configuration and there is no need to invert because our lowest priority group is pointing away from us. So we just keep our S. However, we can see that there is a, an inconsistency now. We can see that our, our answers don't quite match up and we know that our Fisher projection is a reliable tool and method for determining R and S configurations. So, so really that makes this method now questionable. And, and so let's just, uh, let's just show where we went wrong and perhaps show a new demonstration of that. Um, so let's just repeat the example by showing um, the exact same molecule. So I had a bromine up here. Down here I had hydrogen. And this was an ethyl. And then this was my, my wedge. And that was going to be, or that was a methyl. So now, uh, so basically this is what we need to do. If we have a lowest priority group on a planar bond, well, all we really need to do is just move it over to our, our dashed line. Because that's where we want it. Remember, we want it to be pointed away from us. And then consequently to that, the ethyl will go to where the hydrogen was and it will replace it. So ethyl will go over here. And now ethyl is sitting right there. And let's just cross these out because these are no longer here anymore. Let's go back into, uh, into numbering our ordering our demonstrating our orders of priority. So we have one, two for the ethyl, three for the methyl, and four for our new hydrogen. So we move in this direction. We have an S configuration. Actually, this is an R configuration because we are moving in a, in a clockwise fashion. So this is an R configuration. However, there is definitely inversion because, I mean, that's, that's, that's what this, all of this demonstration was. It was uh, showing that we moved the hydrogen from, from here to here and we moved an ethyl from, from here to there. So, so there's definitely inversion. So with inversion, we end up with an S configuration. And this S configuration now matches the S configuration we were able to, to determine and demonstrate with the uh, Fisher projection. So, so as you can see, this is, this is actually the correct way in, uh, in using inversion when we are determining R and S configurations. So, so now let's just go back to our initial problem and, you know, I mean, let's just verify that what I said was, was, was correct earlier. Because I said that if we have a, a, our lowest priority group attached to a, a wedged or a dashed line, 
Well, well, I said that you know you don't have to necessarily go through all of that, and you could just simply call for an inversion when when you need one. And so let's just let's just verify that and make sure that that's true. So let's just uh, we're just going to basically redraw the same molecule. So over here we had a a wedge attached to a hydrogen. So let's just move things around a little bit here. So this is going to be our lowest priority group and we want it to be pointing away from us. So we'll move it over here to this dashed line and as a consequence to that we will take our methyl group and move it over here to where the hydrogen was. Now let's go back and uh, I suppose we can just count our orders of priority again. So we have one on the, on the oxygen, two on the ethyl, three, this is, this is where the new methyl is located, and I suppose I can just cross this out because that's not there anymore, and then four over here on this hydrogen, and I can cross this out because this is no longer here anymore either. So now let's just show our, our counting, and we move in this counterclockwise fashion, so we have an S configuration. However, there was inversion, and we ended up with an R configuration, which says exactly the same thing as this. So, so it does make sense, and it does work. So hopefully that was helpful, and uh, hopefully that will prevent uh, future possible discrepancies on, on tests, homework, or, or whatever it is that you're working on.